the organ here at Calvary United Methodist Church was originally designed for a church in Snow Hill, Maryland, Bates Memorial Methodist Providence Church at the time, and it was installed there in 1919 by the Moeller Organ Corporation of Hagerstown, Maryland. It was what they called their Opus 2990 or 2990. And in 1946, Bates Memorial purchased another Moeller organ, Opus 7415, and appears to have traded in Opus 2990 towards that purchase. Calvary then purchased Opus 2990 from the Moeller Company, who refurbished it and installed it here at Calvary. Uh, and after World War II, there was a move here at Calvary to expand the music program. And as a result of expanding the music program through the purchase of a refurbished pipe organ, Calvary also expanded the sanctuary. Uh, essentially, where this arch is here, uh, just in front of where I'm sitting, was the end of the original sanctuary. And in 1948, the congregation had made a decision to move forward with the purchase of a pipe organ. I think the price back then was about $8,500, believe it or not. And they also expanded the sanctuary. So everything from this archway here back, including the back hallway, the organ chamber, and the two storage rooms in the back hallway were all added in 1948 and early 1949. The cost for the building addition was far in excess of what the organ cost. Uh, but the expansion had to happen in order to provide space for not only the organ chamber, which is located behind the back wall, but the organ console and uh, several rows of choir pews. In roughly 2002, 2003, maybe it was 2004, the congregation made the decision to cut the cord on the organ. And at the time, we were able to buy a digital piano known as a clavinova that could produce organ sounds. The administrative council wanted an elder statesman, and, and whether Art will bristle at being called an elder statesman or not, uh, I'm not sure. But they also wanted someone with musical expertise and organ expertise. And so the administrative council tapped Art Riley and uh, me to co-lead that task force. Calvary was faced with a challenge. Our music instrumentation that we were using in worship was not functional. We had to make a decision as to how we were going to proceed with the musical instrumentation to be used during our worship services each Sunday morning. So it was decided by the church leadership to form a, uh, a task group, a, a subgroup, to study what the best way would be to move forward in terms of music instruments for the congregation. The type of instrumentation that was going to be used at our Sunday morning worship service was a very important decision because music is an important part of our worship. This important decision had to be made by a cross-section of the congregation. So we assembled about six leaders from the congregation, some of which who had preconceived notions of what instrumentation to use, and some did not. From that six people, we expanded to anyone who wanted to voice their opinion as to what type of instrumentation we should use. From that point on, we started to examine vendors, types of instruments that could be possibly used, with an emphasis probably on the organ that we had in storage. This was an asset of Calvary that in the end was an asset we couldn't ignore. So ultimately, the task force uh, went back to the administrative council, offered its recommendation, and got permission from the administrative council to move forward and negotiate a project and a contract with the Paragallo Organ Company 
which is based in Patterson, New Jersey. We took turns visiting other churches. We consulted organists in the area. We listened to organs and soon found we had two decisions, big decisions. One, were we going to go with a pipe organ? If so, what type of a pipe organ? Was we going to use our existing pipe organ, modify it, or we were going to go with a completely new electronic organ, which produces all of its sounds electronically as opposed to using wind pipes. From that point on, we visited churches, as we said, we talked to organists in the area and listened to a variety of manufacturers and types of organs as we marched to the decision as that we finally came to, which was to use the asset of the pipe organ the Calvary owned and refurbish it and include electronic sounds. The committee was really taken aback by the job that Paragallo had done with the limited resources that Bon Secours had. Uh, they had undertaken a project to renovate what was a molar organ, quite similar to the one that we had installed here in 1949. And the Paragallo Organ Company had taken that molar organ, refurbished it, added digital stops, and created what was an absolutely unbelievable sound, acoustic product in their sanctuary. We started talking about a music instrument project roughly 2014, 2015. The Clavinova was starting to have some issues. We were able to effect repairs on it, but the manufacturer no longer made parts for it. One of the things that uh, choosing Paragallo organ uh, builders did for us was enable us to take the best of what uh, we had purchased from the MP Moeller Corporation back in the 1940s, uh, add in digital technology, and to make some enhancements to the pipes that we already had. You can see that it looks like there are at least three different types of pipes in the facade that we have behind me. You see some pipes that are painted a pewter or a gold color. Those pipes were a part of the original organ that was installed back in Snow Hill, Maryland in 1919. They're almost pure lead and they sort of had a grayish, almost black tint to them. So they weren't at all appealing from an aesthetic point of view. They weren't pretty. But Paragallo took those principal pipes, what's called a diapason, and cleaned them up, painted them, made them look pretty, and put them out in front. And they comprise part of the great organ. They're original. 
to the installation from 1949. They've just been moved and put on full view. Uh, there's another set of pipes here in the facade, uh, which you can see have some red felt trim around them. That is a uh, stopped flute, a roar flute, as it's called in German. And we traded a set of very softly speaking string pipes to the Paragallo folks for this nice set of flutes, which now sit out in the facade as well. It gives us a medium bodied solo stop to use without having expression shades. There were one set of expression shades or swell shades, which controls the volume of the pipes. When you play a note on a pipe organ, you get one volume. It is what it is. And the way you can mitigate the volume, make it softer or to make it louder, is to open and close what they call expression shades that are just like Venetian blinds. They open and close in the same manner. In the latter stages of our research on this project, Bill Sadler came across some documents that indicated that the organ purchased in 1948. Much of the funds used to purchase the organ were donated by members of the Gamber community in honor of soldiers of World War II, some of whom did not make it back alive. That was a commitment that the congregation made to the generations of music lovers at Calvary. The product that we have refurbished and provided at Calvary will last another 60 years. So we are very comfortable that this will build a legacy upon the 1948-49 purchase of the original Muller pipe organ. It was not an insignificant undertaking that the congregation did in 1948 and 1949. In fact, in September of 1948, Calvary shut its doors on its own physical building. They worshipped in what was the Mount Pleasant Methodist Episcopal Church, which is now Faith Family Church on Route 32, for about eight months. They had their last service in the Calvary building in September 1948, and then began to worship at the Mount Pleasant Church building until Palm Sunday 1949, when Calvary came back into this building with the expanded chancel area, the choir loft, and the new organ. So it was not an insignificant sacrifice that the congregation made back in 1948, both financially, physically, and emotionally. The committee felt it was important to honor the heritage that Calvary had put in place over so many years caring for its music program.